Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Uncle Tone. How you guys doing? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Spec Candy Shell for the iPhone 4. Um, the, the Candy Shell for the 3GS was one of my top five cases. I really like that case. Spec's gone ahead and redone the Candy Shell for the iPhone 4. I'm sure you guys already knew that. But what you may not have known though is there are actually three different versions of this case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all three versions of the case with you first and then we'll get into the actual review and I'll let you guys know what I think of it, okay? Cool beans! So here we have version 2 and version 3. Let's start with version 2. Since version 2 is virtually identical to version 1 except for one small difference. So we pop it open. Here's the case inside. And spec doesn't include screen shields with the candy shells anymore. So all you're getting is the case. And here is the version 2 of the spec candy shell. Like I said, this is virtually identical to version 1 except for the camera cutout. Hopefully you guys can see around the camera oh, area, there, area there. Put this behind it. There you go. Behind the camera area there, there is a black silicone around the camera cutout, which is keyhole shaped. You have the keyhole shaped camera cutout and around there you do have the black silicone. Um, version 1 of this case was identical to this one, except it didn't have this black silicone around the outside. So, you got a lot of washout with your pictures and whatnot when you were using the flash. So, Spec went ahead and put the black silicone around there on version 2, which fixed the washout problem, I guess. However, a few people have reported problems with this one um, when popping it in and out of holsters and just basic normal wear and tear, that sort of thing. Apparently this silicone is a little soft, this silicone rubber material, and is actually breaking down and literally flaking off and, and little pieces of it were coming off. So they went ahead and made version 3. And here we have version 3. We'll pop that out of the package. Again, same packaging, same everything, same plastic iPhone inside, no screen shield, all the same deal. And uh, they've changed the rubber compound here to a harder rubber compound that seems to be more durable. I haven't had any issues with it. I've mostly been using version 3 because I knew of the issues with version 2. I actually uh, only used this for like a day or so, and then I popped on version 3. I've been using this one a little longer. So hopefully you guys can see there that the silicone on version 3, which is this one right here, is a little bit darker than the silicone rubber material on version 2. More of a black, whereas this one is more of a charcoal gray kind of a material. Almost black, but not quite. More of a grayish, dark gray color. And this one is pretty much black. I don't know if you guys can really tell that in the camera, though. It's a very subtle difference, but it is there. So, moving on to version 3. Version 3, they made a few changes on version 3. Not only the silicone compound being harder, um, they also changed the camera cutout to a pill-shaped cutout. I guess maybe, I don't know, a few people were having issues with the flash and stuff still. I don't know why exactly they changed the camera cutout, but they did. They changed the camera cutout. Nice, I just knocked everything off the table. They changed the camera cutout to a pill-shaped cutout, as opposed to the keyhole cutout on version 2. Which actually, to be perfectly honest with you, I prefer the pill-shaped cutout. I think it just looks better. It keeps, it goes with the rest of the look of the case and uh, just looks better, I think. So I, I kind of prefer the pill-shaped cutout anyway. The other change they made on version 3 is the dock connector. Um, version 1 and version 2 had quite a small dock connector. As you can see, the only cable that actually worked with that was your included Apple cable. Your third-party cables were not compatible. Version 3, they went ahead and they make that cutout a little bit bigger so that you can use it with your third-party cables. Here I have my uh, Griffin cable. I use this cable a lot for connecting to my computer. And as you can see, it doesn't fit in version 2. There's no way that's happening. Here's version 3. As you can see, it works just fine. It's a little snug. 
but the camera, the dock, I'm sorry, cutout is just big enough for that to get in there. So that's very cool that they made that camera, the, why do I keep saying camera? Hello? The dock cutout, bigger, so that you could accommodate your third party cables. Um, I won't use a case if I can't use my third party cables with it. I will not use it. Um, I rarely use my Apple cables. I find the quality on my Apple cables sucks. Um, they always break and split on the ends and stuff, so I generally use my third party cables, like my Griffin cable. I use that all the time to connect it to my computer. Also because it's not very long, so I can simply plug it into my uh, laptop and I don't have seven feet of cable sticking out of my laptop, you know. So I actually prefer that cable for syncing and to my computer and whatnot. So to install this case, you simply go button side first. I usually pop in this corner here first and then pop the top in like so and then just kind of press it in. Kind of like that, just like I did. And there you go, it's on the phone. Um, same great case as the 3GS version. Um, this is uh, essentially identical. If you've used the candy shell for the iPhone 3GS, you're gonna be very familiar with the, camera, with the candy shell for the iPhone 4. Um, they're really not that much different. Um, same flexible corners and so on and so forth. This one is actually a little easier to get off, I think, than the 3GS version. You can simply pop it off, press like this, press like that, bingo bango, there you go, it's off. It's really not that difficult. Put it back on again, same way I did before, pop it right in there, not a problem. Let's go over the cutouts. The can headphone jack cutout is a little on the small side. Um, if you're using oversized jacks, like say the iFrogs DJ style headphones, I don't have those anymore, I gave them to my sister. But um, if you're using an oversized jack like that, it's probably not gonna work too well for you. But most of your iPhone kind of jacks should work just fine because uh, most of mine do. All my uh, Beats jacks and stuff like that, those all work fine. Uh, home button, uh, sorry, sleep wake button, um, has a nice feel to it actually. One of my complaints with the original candy shell, the first one that came out was it, the pressing the sleep and wake button was really difficult. You were just kind of honking on it and hoping for the best. You really couldn't feel anything. This one's got a pretty good feel. You can feel it when you press the button and it wakes up and so on and so forth, and it's pretty good. Um, volume, and, uh, volume rocker and vibrate switch. The volume buttons feel great. You can actually hear them click when you press them. I really like the volume buttons on here. They did a great job on those. Vibrate switch is a little tricky to get to. The cutout is kind of small. I have to use my nail to flick it, like so. I have big fingers, and I tend to keep my nails really short, so I have to use my nail to kind of get in there and flick it. There you go. And then use my nail to flick it back up. Um, it's kind of small, but, you know, it provides better protection, and it, it is easier enough to get, easy enough, I'm sorry, to get to, so it's not really a big problem. It's kind of nitpicking, really. Uh, like I said, the dock cutout on the bottom is bigger and does work with your third-party cables. And your speaker and microphone ports are individually cut out and line up really well. Not a problem with that at all. Um, basically, guys, what it's going to come down to is this is essentially the same case as the candy shell for the 3GS, just redone to fit the iPhone 4. They fixed the peeling problem from version 2. They made the cutout bigger. They switched to the pill-shaped design, which I like better for the camera cutout, to be perfectly honest with you. And, um, you know, really the only problem you have here is scratching. Just like the 3GS version of this case, it does scratch. It would be nice if Spec could put some kind of anti-scratch coating on it to prevent the scratching. It's harder to see on light colors like white, which is one of the reasons why I got the white. But, as you can see, it does scratch. So... You know, it would be nice if they could put some kind of anti-scratch coating on there. But, again, you're buying a case, really, to pretend, prevent your phone from getting scratched anyway. So, better to scratch the case than it is your phone. Um, you're getting some good drop protection here with the silicone on the inside and the hard plastic on the outside. All in all, it's a really decent case, guys. It's $34.95, um, but you can find them on cheaper elsewhere online. Can be found cheaper. So, you know... Uh, the price isn't really that big of a deal because, like I said, you can find them cheaper online. So, $34.95 for the Spec Candy Shell. 
I'm still a big fan of the candy shell, guys. I like it. I think it's a great case. Very protective. I just wish it didn't scratch so much, but that's kind of nitpicking, like I said. So, that's pretty much going to do it for my review on this Beck candy shell, guys. I'll give it one and a half thumbs up. One and a half. Because, you know, it scratches. So, one, one and a half thumbs up. Cool beans. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Rock on.